Hey, friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day five in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website. We're going to show you how to go from feeling like a beginner in Logic Pro to becoming an expert, where you're fully comfortable and capable to execute on your creative ideas easily in this amazing application. Today, I want to get you set up to perform and record with the included instruments that come with Logic Pro. Logic Pro comes with a ton of software instruments that you can use for your own productions. And all you need is a way to perform these instruments, either with your Mac's keyboard or connected controller. Let's load a software instrument by going to the plus button here in the tracks area to add a new track. And by clicking on this button, we bring up the new tracks dialog. And the new tracks dialog looks a little different from the first video in this series. And that's because we've enabled the complete feature set for Logic Pro under the advanced settings. So we're gonna load a software instrument track type and under the detail section right here, if you click on it, we can expand the view of the new tracks dialog. We could even specify which software instrument we wanna load to our new track just by clicking on this drop down menu. And as you can see, Logic Pro comes stacked with all sorts of instruments for you to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and load the vintage electric piano and we're just gonna click create. All right, Logic has automatically loaded the plugin for the vintage electric piano. And if we open the inspector, we see the channel strip that corresponds with our instrument one track. Let's close the electric piano for right now. And let's close the inspector. Right out of the gate, software instruments are primed and ready to begin recording. Though it looks a little different, this track is record enabled. And all we need to do at this point is begin recording to start laying down our ideas. The only other detail is we need some way to be able to perform with the electric piano into our project. We can do this one of two ways. To start with, let's go up to window in the top menu bar and almost all the way at the bottom of this dropdown menu, we have two options. We can either decide to open the keyboard window or open the on-screen musical typing window. I recommend that you open the musical typing window to begin recording and performing. So let's click the show the musical typing from here, the musical typing window pops up and it looks like a musical keyboard. And if you take a look on the individual keys of the keyboard, we can see that they're labeled with the different keys from our Max keyboard. Starting with the A key, we can play a C. Going all the way up to the apostrophe key on the right hand side of the keyboard, we can play an F. And as you can see, as long as the musical typing window is open, if I press any of these keys on my Max keyboard, we will perform those notes with the electric piano. So let's try playing a C major chord. Pretty awesome, right? As long as the musical typing window is open, your Mac's keyboard has transformed into a musical playing device. And you can close the musical typing window by going back up to window and going down to hide musical typing. Or if you take a look at the right-hand side of this menu, you could also use the key command on your Mac's keyboard, command K. So if we hold the command key and click on K, we close this window. And now our Mac keyboard reverts back to a computer keyboard. We'll dig into the musical typing window further into the series. I just want to show you that really quickly for now so you can get right down to making music. For the rest of this video, we're going to focus on how to connect a USB controller to Logic Pro. Just in case you're not familiar, a USB controller is a separate device that you connect to your Mac that allows you to perform and record with these different software instruments. These controllers usually connect using a USB connection, and they'll often come in the form of a keyboard or a drum pad or something similar. These devices don't generate sound on their own. They simply communicate to Logic Pro which notes should be performed when with a given instrument. For example, I already have a controller connected to my Mac. It is from the company Nectar, and it's the Impact GX49. It looks just like a keyboard, and if I press some of the notes on the keyboard, we will hear the electric piano in this project. Nine times out of 10, when you connect a controller to your Mac, Logic Pro is probably gonna recognize the fact that it's connected. And from there, you can get right down to making music with your controller. That's exactly what happened with my Nectar Impact. I just plugged it in, turned it on, and away I went. So if nine times out of 10, Logic Pro will instantly recognize a USB controller and allow you to start using it for your software instruments, what else is there to discuss, really? Well, many USB controllers out there provide much more than just keys or drum pads for you to perform with. In fact, these controllers might provide different buttons or faders or knobs that allow you to control Logic Pro right from the controller. 
For example, my Impact Keyboard Controller actually provides transport controls, which allows me to control playback from my controller instead of using my Mac's keyboard and mouse. If you take a look up in the LCD, when I press the play button on the Nectar controller, we can see a little dot in the LCD that indicates to us that there is information transferring to Logic Pro from my controller, but the playhead didn't begin playing. If I press record, once again, we see MIDI information, but nothing happens. So we need to do a little bit of setup with Logic Pro to get this controller working. Now your controller setup situation may be completely different from mine. You're really gonna have to take a look at the manufacturer website for your controller to learn more about how to get your controller working with Logic Pro. But I wanna give you a couple of tips. Let's go up to Logic Pro in the top menu bar. And let's go down to control surfaces. And from there, let's click on setup. The control surface setup window will show you any and all controllers that are currently connected to your Mac or have been connected to your Mac. But at this moment, we don't see any controllers in this window. Although I have the impact controller connected, we don't see it listed on the right hand side of this window. So let's connect a different controller that I have on my desk. I have the Novation Launchpad right next to me, and I'm gonna connect it right now. Check it out. Take a look. This is the first time I've connected the Launchpad X to my Mac since downloading Logic Pro. Logic instantly recognized it, and we even see an image of the controller in the controller surface setup window. So now I can start performing with this controller and use the built-in functions for controlling Logic Pro. Now that's awesome, but we still don't see the impact controller. From here, we're gonna dig a little deeper by clicking on the new dropdown in the upper left-hand corner of the control surface setup window, and we're gonna click on install. Logic has this handy install window that shows all sorts of different controllers from different manufacturers. And if your controller doesn't automatically pop up in the control surface setup window when you connect it, you can try locating and adding your controller using the install window. As you can see, when we start to scroll, we see all sorts of controllers from all sorts of manufacturers. And if I have one of these controllers connected to my Mac, we could then add this controller to the control surface setup window and then we would have to manually specify the input and output port for our controller. We can also search for our specific controller as well. So I'm gonna type in Nectar. And look at that, boom, we have two results for Nectar controllers. Number one, we have the Impact LX49 and the SE49. The only problem is my controller is the Impact GX49. So unfortunately, neither of these results help me right now. But again, you may find your controller in this install window so it's worth taking a look. So I won't be installing either of these controllers, so I'll close out of this window. And I'm just gonna close out of the control surface setup window as well. What now? I mean, my impact controller works with Logic Pro, but I really wanna use the other extra features of the controller. And that's why it's super important to read the manual and check the manufacturer website. Because as it turns out, there's actually an extra piece of software I have to download from Nectar to get these transport controls working on my controller. So I already have Safari loaded and we can see right here, there's my controller and there's the script that I need to download specifically for any version of Logic Pro 10.6 or higher. So I'm gonna close out of Logic Pro and we'll go ahead and download this right now. Okay, I've gone ahead and installed the necessary software for my controller. We're gonna go back up to Logic Pro, go down to control surfaces and go to setup. This way we can see what happens when I turn on my impact controller. I'm gonna turn it on right now. All right, Logic Pro now recognizes my impact controller and is even asking me, hey, do you want to automatically assign the controls of your controller to their designated functions? Absolutely. So let's click on auto assign in this pop-up. And look at that. We can now see an image for the impact GX49 in the control surface setup window. We now know this controller is being recognized by Logic Pro. If we close the control surface setup window, if I now press play on my controller, look at that, we're now controlling the transport functions of Logic Pro from the controller. I just press stop on the controller to stop playback. I'll press stop again to go to the beginning of the project and let's try recording.
And look at that, we just recorded for the first time to a software instrument track in our project. Now that all of our devices and sounds are installed and ready to work with Logic Pro, let's really start to dive in and get to know Logic Pro. I'll see you for more tomorrow in this Newbie to Ninja series. Take care.